Hello, it's Gray. Hello, it's Crystal. And this is Bust Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show many, many times. And I, someone who only knows about the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 6, Episode 1, Exile on Main Street. Written by our new showrunner, Sarah Gamble. Directed by Phil Segrisha. Air date September 24, 2010. Sarah Gamble is such a person who would say that Dean is gay for having a girlfriend. Yeah. I think Sarah Gamble thinks everything is gay. Yeah. And yeah. it is. If you're in love with your girlfriend, dude, that's gay as fuck. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. This... Okay. Couple things... As we've said, Sarah Gamble is the, the, now the showrunner of this thing. It's her first showrunner switch. Do you feel mm. a difference? Or... I think, I don't think honestly, one episode is enough for me to know. Yeah. I do think so. I think maybe it is also the fact that Sarah Gamble, first season under her, Sam is not there. Like, this is not Sam. And mm. it is... Like I wonder what the public reception was, or what the fan what the fan reception was, and it's like oh we'll we have a new out. season, new showrunner. Yeah, we will find out. But like, are people like, ah, why is she writing Sam this way? Which, like, I tried to imagine watching this episode without knowing the twist, and I think I would have disliked it or something. I don't know. He Do seems like so? a perfectly nice young man. Honestly, he seems normal. It's just yeah. the show is trying to make it seem to be a certain way. Uh, I did laugh out loud when he rejected that damn car. He literally was like, you're obsessed yeah, with that car, not so me. Funny. <laughs> this episode sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Is it? I think it opened okay enough and then samuel campbell came in and i went this is fucking stupid <laughs> and then i zoned out for the rest i will admit the sample camp sample camp <laughs> the samuel camp bull- bullshit is kind of corny tired and played out and it's been yeah. going on for one episode so i yeah. don't think i'm gonna like it and I never did like it. At least he dies eventually. And it, it is fascinating. The thing, I guess, that they're trying to do with, like, what does family mean? Honestly, it's just so incredibly hilarious to me that, like, supernatural... Like, does family mean your brother or also your cousins? <laughs> or also your grandfather that you've never met? Like, okay. Well, they did in the past. Honestly... What I feel about this is that um, Supernatural is a show about family, except they keep trying to move that fucking goalpost. Mm. And instead of being like about whatever family or about how family isn't everything, there's other people in your life too. <laughs> it just keeps on expanding the family unit, mm-hmm. which is really funny to me. I wish, I wish that... Lisa had a personality or something. That'd be cool. It is fascinating that they try to give her a personality and they don't. What's that about? I think misogyny is what that is what that is about. Yeah, I mean she's there for Dean to be worried about for his growth, and that's about it this episode. Yeah. And also another thing, I think maybe it's just like because it's season six now. Like, it's just my brain doing it because of that distinctive line between, like, Mm -hmm. season one to five and then six onwards, right? But it feels a little bit like Dean has just, like, this is not... Okay, many times this episode, I was watching it, I had the thought, this is Jensen Ackles. Hmm. Which is like, I've never thought that about Dean, ever. That's always been, like, exclusive to Jared Padalecki for me. (laughs) 
Uh, watching this episode, I was like, oh, we're watching the TV show Supernatural. I don't know. It was it was such an extraordinary, distinctive feeling for me that I felt the need to point it out. Mm. Can't believe we're watching the TV show Supernatural. Pretty fucked up. Yeah. I'm excited for this season to get going in that, you know, Cass and Crowley and all that. Yeah. But yeah. it's and I want Supernatural. Solace Sam to get a little weird with it. Yeah. Um, I I do feel Supernatural is just never that good with beginning seasons. They're just never that good. Mm. Um, 201 so, was good. Yeah, and 401 was good. Yeah. But, you know, 3 out of 5. <laughs> That's most. <laughs> well, now 6 out of 6. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> now what? it's 4 out of 6. So, you know. 4 out of 6 were bad, yeah. Well, I mean, 101 was okay. It's fine. So we're so, we're so It's so good. <laughs> no, it's. I think it's a really solid introduction to a concept of a TV show. Yeah, sure. Now they're introducing concept of seasons, which I think can be just a little bit more intricate. Uh, let's start the episode. Yeah. Wait, no, no. what did I know? What did you know about this episode? Very little. Define very little. I only knew about the montage at the beginning. Of course, the ever iconic montage, and of course, when Yellow Eye hallucination goes, your buddy Cass was brought back or something because that's part of I the. I didn't. I don't know that part. That's part of the Destiel supercut for some reason. Like oh. season six, Dean Cass natural. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm. Like that, that series of um. Dean and Cass scene collections for AMV mm. makers. Uh, season six starts with that scene, which I always thought yeah. was weird. And watching this episode now, I'm like, that is weird. Why did they put that there? <laughs> did, is it just because they mentioned Cass? Well, okay. Yeah, I think so. Well, it's important to mention Cass. Well, I don't know it how is. it's relevant to Destiel, really. Cass isn't relevant to Destiel. You heard it here first, folks. No, but like cast, I they don't put cast yeah. scenes in there. They put Destiel scenes in there. So you know, mm-hmm. well, you know that Sam was gonna be back, but you don't know how they're gonna get reintroduced. I suppose. Yeah. Well, we start the episode. Uh, there's like bunch of flashbacks of like what happened last episode, and oh, it mm-hmm. says like one year ago, and then flashback, flashback, flashback. Yeah. And All then in black and white. Uh, in case you didn't know, yeah. it was old. In case you didn't know that this happened a year ago. Uh, <laughs> they didn't have color photography the oldest thing a year that has ago. ever happened. Yeah. Uh, but, like, slowly realized that it's, like, Dean dreaming? Or is it? Are we supposed to think that? Because I wasn't paying that much attention while watching this No, episode. I think it's just the then sequence. No, because I thought what happened is that it, like, fades to Dean, who's already awake. So he's, like... Awake thinking back to this or something. It's possible. Yeah, we, we go to Dean. He's lying in bed. He's comfy cozy. It's like it alarms 7 a.m. He turns around. Lisa's there. Yeah, she's sleeping with her back to him to show her subconscious emotional distance from him. Is it emotion? Is it subconscious emotional distance or a willingness to trust? I'm not sure. What is the what is the symbolism in sleeping in beds? I don't like that. I severely dislike it. So maybe so for me the symbolism of being in bed with someone is I I hate this so much whichever direction <laughs> I'm facing. Real. Uh Lisa, her first words this episode, are you okay? <laughs> Which really sets up her characterization for the rest of it. Mm. And they tried to give yeah. her something a little bit more towards the end, but I don't know if they did. Yeah. Honestly, don't know. The end's like, yeah. And then they roll out of bed. They start the day. There's a montage. The The montage is, like, very domestic. Well, one, he's cooking breakfast for Ben and Lisa. And there is, like, it's cute. Like, it, they're, they're, like, all in the kitchen, all in the dining room. And there's, like, some dynamic movements, whatever. The pan is fat, is fun. 
you know, like I always did yeah. like that motion. Yeah, I do like of like him. Lisa going under his arm as he's moving through the kitchen. He's a carpenter. Love it. Love a carpenter. I thought he was a construction worker. Well, he's specifically working with wood. Does that automatically make you a carpenter? There's there's parts of the construction work. If he was a mm-hmm. fucking, um, if he was a mason, that, that's right, mason in English. Okay, oh, true. Well, if he was yeah. a mason, he would have been working with the damn cement or something. It's true. Or a, what's cinder block? Is that what you call it? Yeah. But yeah, he's a he's a woodworker specifically. He's a carpenter. He's working with that fucking chisel. He's he's hammering it with a metal hammer, which I did find fun. Because like I, I remember watching someone talk about like the importance of a mallet when you use it with the chisel. And mm-hmm. how like you can use if it's a plastic handed chisel, you can just use whatever with it, even a metal hammer. And in fact you'll see that a lot in construction work. And I was like, Oh, okay. And then like seeing Dean use a metal hammer for a chisel in construction work is pretty fun. So true. Uh, and, you know, he's cutting up some wood. I'm really occupied by this carpenter shit. But I love that he's a carpenter. Love it. The important part of the montage is that each scene is intercut with a flashback from hunting life. Like when he's oh, making yeah. breakfast, it goes to shaking about salt that. on windows to keep demons Do shaking out. shaking it, yeah. For the carpentry, there's him, like, killing vampires with, like, a saw or a stake or whatever the fuck. No yeah, stakes. Like, stakes don't work. When he... When he opened, like, a car trunk to get something, and it's, like, weapons to real life. And also, like, I did, I did, I did feel a little bit emo about that part when it was him teaching Sam about the car, and Mm -hmm. it's intercut with him teaching Ben about the car. And it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. Which makes it even more funny that later on he was like, Sam, you take the car. (laughs) And he literally (laughs) digaffed. Yeah, and the song playing over it is Beautiful Loser. So Yeah. The song is about, like, your dreams falling apart. Yeah, it's about how you can't have home and security as well as living like a sailor at sea. So it's about how Dean has to choose one between hunting and domestic life or whatever the fuck I assume. Yeah, and he'll choose to do Goodbye Stranger. The song, not the episode. I guess he also chooses to do the episode. The final, like, you know, there's, like, some guy throughout that montage that he, like, grills stuff with. Incredibly funny. Mm -hmm. What is it with, like, men and grilling? Or, like, American, the American concept of masculinity and grilling. Is it, like, the only acceptable form of cooking in terms of masculinity? My dad does barbecue things. You did mention this, yeah. My dad also cooks normal style, though. But my dad is not, I think, the pinnacle of American masculinity. Well, I mean, you know, he should try harder. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'll tell him to watch more football. No, yeah, I think I think there is an idea of like like they would not cook in the kitchen, but they do barbecue because it's like charcoal and open flame so it's tough or whatever my dad also does the grill <laughs> so it's it's maybe it's also filipino masculinity so true and now we go to dean and this dude named sid who sounds exactly like sam winchester well it sounds exactly like jared padalecki yeah Gray pointed this out. I didn't notice while I was watching it, and then I rewatched that scene with my eyes closed, and like he actually does have Jared Padalecki, which is, <laughs> which is of course how I watch every episode of Supernatural <laughs> with my eyes closed. But yeah, he sounds so much like Jared Padalecki. I literally like I was I I was startled like watching it. Like oh, Sam is already here. I thought I was later in the episode. Uh, but no, it's not Sam. It's Sid. I don't. I forgot what he's complaining about. He's like talking about. Like, I think his old I think he, life, like, right? Like he's fucked like, a goat or uh, something. Is that it? Did he? I talk don't know about? what the joke is. He's just saying that. Luckily, no one took a picture of him and that goat, like, and put it on yeah. Facebook. And it's like, what did you do with the goat? But he's saying like, oh, I can't believe like this is my life right now. Like I'm in the suburbs. 
and he's trying to get Dean to tell him his about his past. But Dean is quiet and reserved about it. And uh, like we established, it's like a year ago. Um, and Dean says he's in pest control. Um, and he's like, yeah. well, yeah, you get Which to Cass also says help people. in season 10, right? That he's an exterminator. Yeah. Yeah, you don't let the bed bugs bite, is what he says. <laughs> mm. uh, he, he winks in that scene. <laughs> Cass is yeah. so wonderful. You can literally hear the difference of the lilt in my voice talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Dean saying he's from Fast Control, Cordy tired and played out. Cass saying he's from Fast Control, the most adorable thing in the world. And Dean, you know, it's like, oh, it's like a little bit scary that this is all happening. But, you know, it's it's wonderful too. And then they do this scene where the bartender hands Dean, like, a receipt with her number on it. And, like, the guy's like, oh, I think that girl sent to you. And Dean's like, you think? And then he raises the, the receipt with the bartender's number on it. And, like, what we're supposed to learn from this is, like, yeah, Dean has settled down. But not because he's not desirable anymore. He's so desirable. <laughs> Women want to fuck so him so bad, but he just won't because he's loyal. Yeah, because he's a good person. Because that would make you a good person. Being loyal to your beautiful wife, I guess. They're not married. Are they married? They're not married. They're not married. <laughs> Well, maybe they should have gotten married here in the Philippines that way and they could never have left her. <laughs> it's so unbelievable that we don't have a divorce. I feel like the older and older I get, the more ridiculous I think it is. Why yeah. do we have it? Like, every time know. somebody is like, I'm getting married, instead of being like, happy for you, which is, I believe, what I would feel if there was divorce. Yeah, just like, it's just are like, you are sure? you fucking sure? This is irreversible. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, he like, he tears this fucking receipt apart and everything. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he had some. So as he's heading out, he hears a scream in the distance. So he goes to inspect some deserted building near some hotel renovation thing. And it's all drawn out and suspenseful. And there's claw marks and blood there, but... He can't find anything else. You know, there's like multiple parts in the scene where he just mm. literally hears like a house noise, like a noise that a house would make. And he's like, oh. mm. <laughs> and yeah, I, he's so I think, swinging his gun around. I think Supernatural is getting into my psyche because like a sound will happen in her house. I'll be terrified. <laughs> And every single time I'm like, oh, this happened in Supernatural. And then the second voice in my head is like, Supernatural is a fictional TV show. <laughs> but yeah, House Noise says, yeah. it's scary. Back at Lisa's, which the transcript calls Dean's house. I don't know about that. But, well, it's his home now. Ew. Sorry. It's it is Dean's Lisa's home. House. I don't think it's Dean's house. Yeah, is his name in the fucking lease, lease agreement exactly. or whatever? Exactly. I don't think so. Or mortgage like, or something? Like, his credit score know. sucks. She would not have him co-sign the mortgage. When she's signing that mortgage, she actively hides that there's, like, some other guy that was gonna live with her. <laughs> she's like, yes. you're gonna fuck up my, my chances of getting this fucking done. He's calling the police station and trying to see if anything has happened near that area that they've heard about and he sees lisa standing in the doorway and then he starts pretending that he's calling his friend and then hangs up um even though she literally knows about hunting so there's no point yeah i do find it fascinating what they do with like lisa just because you're right that like she knows about the hunting life. So when Dean is doing all this, it's like he doesn't need to hide it. But I suppose, like, I mean, later, I think he does do a solid with, like, asking Lisa and Ben to, like, step out for a bit so he can reassure yeah. himself. And that's the way he worded it. Like, I think that's a good mm-hmm. thing. Um, I think my main thought is, like, 
I wonder how often this happens. Uh, mm-hmm. Dean later alludes to like their relationship or their life being a fucking mess a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And like, is this what it's referring to? Like Dean is quote unquote paranoid. Yeah, like has this happened before? I mean, they they act like it's a new thing because of the poison. But yeah, yeah, it I'm could be sure. that this time it's real. Um, and like maybe other times, Dean was like, "Oh, I thought it was real, but it's not really." Even though maybe it was, you know, or something. I well, don't know. the claw marks, or maybe it wasn't real. real. What? Well, the claw marks and things aren't real. Are they really not? I I completely no. did not understand the gin subplot of this episode. You know, so it was like they they make you experience like nightmares and stuff until and I'm you not stupid. And then it flashed back. Sorry. <laughs> like if Dean flashed back to like all the claw marks, which implies ah. that that was like hallucinations. Yeah. Well, if there are any visual cues this episode, I completely missed. <laughs> yeah, because you were knitting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm making my beautiful socks, everyone. First pair. Love it. Yeah, so he lies and says that he's trying to set up a poker game with Sid. And that he'll be right up. And Lisa just goes, okay. It is fascinating he has, like, one friend. Because I feel like the the vibe that we get from Suburbs is, like, a bunch of people, like, being friendly. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I they're know direct the neighbors. So they would be close. This is true. They share a fence, I think, is the implication of a scene later. Yeah. Or no. Sees, no, they don't. He's Well, he sees him through the, the window. So I think he's oh, like yeah. right there. That's like, him? He and his wife. That's his family that was being killed later? Yeah, he went Sid <laughs> when he was... <laughs> Rolling the body over. Well, you know, I was I was making the toe of my damn socks, so I was really <laughs> into it. If I was making the body of the socks, I would have known this. It is fascinating that it's yellow eyes that they like bring back in terms of that, because you know it could be anything, it could be anyone. Um, but I suppose they're really hammering home the like fear of domesticity turning bad that Dean has because yeah, they did I mean, they, they do put Lisa, Lisa up the fucking <laughs> wall later yeah uh. Supernatural is it a bad show many yeah. people are discussing this the next day Dean's driving around he sees the exact same claw marks as he saw in the house he follows and then he sees the same claw marks on like a fence or like a door or something And he has his gun out, and he opens it, and it's like a little dog that runs out. And then Sid sees him, and is like, bro, is that a gun? And And he's like, no, yes. (laughs) Yes, I I have a permit for it. Um, And his excuse is that he thinks that the dog, he thought that the the dog was a possum and they have rabies and shit. Um, But then Dean sees sulfur on the ground gasp. I think it was at this point where Sid starts going like, huh, what? That I realized that problem, like, is the reason that Lisa moved between season three and now because if he was in the season three town, they would all know about hunting because they all saw the changeling shit happen. So there's, like, less of that sense of, like, normality that he has to keep up. Yeah, I suppose. Um, because if it was there, it would probably be a better situation. Like, he wouldn't have to keep yeah, normal, like, lie. he can balance that shit, you know? Mm-hmm. It's not one or the other. Which is, yeah. I think th- th- this episode kept on trying to be like, you can only choose one. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think Beautiful Fool was about, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, also, like, I do find fascinating, like, Late earlier we forgot to mention but like there's a in the montage like you know dean's checking out the house before he's going to sleep and he's like in his Mm -hmm. comfy cozy sweatpants and everything which is pretty fun um Mm -hmm. and then it ends with like a gun under his bed like he's sleeping oh my god yeah a fucking loose gun just under his bed 
And it's like, it's not like a pistol or whatever the gun that everybody has has. You know what I mean, right? Like, it's a mm. fucking soft shotgun, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, Do you know anything about guns? Or is that correct? I don't know anything about guns. But like, it look, it doesn't look like a... Well, I suppose it's it's because they, it needs to have a salt round. He's not trying to kill like an intruder who's just a guy, which I think is mm-hmm. what most people justify having gun in the house for. Yeah, um, and by most people, I do mean most Americans. Are, are there any like, other countries yeah, the with the kind of gun laws better. that the U.S. has? Like, do I always have to preface it that way? Um, I don't know. I don't really I, know what, what I mean by that is, is like, I'm not trying to dig at anyone. I, what I mean is just that I don't experience that. Like, we don't have that experience mm-hmm. here. I just see it on um, the news with American news and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure there's other countries that in the world have a lot of full stop. carrying yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you saying that it's a salt round does make me feel better because, like, if Ben shot it, he probably wouldn't die. <laughs> He'd be hurt. I mean, we know But he would be hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should not be having that just loose under the bed like that. How old is Ben by now? He's gotta be like 12 or something, right? We already had this conversation. I think yeah, he's 11 because he, it was his 8th was birthday it, party in season No, I mean, three. last year. It's been a year. So he's 12 now? Or was he then? In the century. Well, if he was 8 and 301, then it would make sense that he's 11 and 601, right? No, but like uh, 301, and then a year, and then season 4, and then a year, season 5, and then season 5 well, goes season five for an entire year. Season 5 directly from the end of season 4. Yeah, but it goes on for forever. So, like, season that's three, true. that's a solid year. Then season four is a year. Season five is a year. That's three years. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, and now it's been a year after now. that. So he's 12 okay. now. All right. I believe it. I do. I, I, I wish there was more of a... Like, something I would have liked to see is... Because I think towards the end of the season, they're going to make an argument that, like, Lisa is good for... Oh, well, they're making it now. They're trying to make it now, right? Like, Lisa is good for Dean or something. And this is a life that's good for him. And the thing Mm. is, um, the way they are trying to frame it is, like, suburban normalcy versus the hunting life. And Mm. I think if later on they're going to make an argument that Dean is actually losing something real and solid here... That that argument is going to be based on the fact that Lisa knows about his past. Like he's not like fully actively trying to hide all of the shit, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I think it would have been interesting to see some of the accommodations that the Braden has household has made for Dean in this regard. You know what I right. mean? Because like yeah. the way we see it now is so, like Dean is doing things and they're letting him do things, which is like. Yeah, that is a form of an accommodation. But, you know, mm-hmm. like, something a bit more proactive, especially on Lisa's part, I think would be interesting to see. Maybe we'd see it in later episodes. But, like, if the point that they're trying to make, which is, I think it is, is that Lisa, like, accepts him for what he is and who he is and his past, etc. Like, it, it would be good and also fun for me personally to see how that would manifest, you know? Mm. It's just that they give Lisa, like, no agency. Like, we don't see her do anything. You know what I mean? It's always, like, a reaction to things or Dean telling her things. Right. I don't know. I I think um last episode, I was, like, I understood that Lisa is like a product of the story. But mm. whenever I conceptualized like the things I find wrong with her character, I still conceptualize it as like Lisa's Lisa, you know. Mm. Like Lisa the character. I think 
seeing this now and seeing how much like actually it could have been interesting like it could be interesting like this whole domestic thing that they're trying to do within is interesting um the more i am like no yeah it is like the writer's fault and i'm able to separate her from like the writing decisions that they have made for her now we go to like you know lisa telling dean about hey like the neighbor told me that you almost shot a fucking dog so what's up with that and dean keeps on being like i don't know man like no it's fine like i just thought but it's not the case and eventually he says like why don't you and Ben go out for a bit while I try to um, I'll I'll do one last sweep so that I can uh, placate myself, which is pretty good. Yeah, uh, and Lisa then they, is the they, one who does the straight up asking, like, "Okay, are you hunting something?" and she does it very matter of fact, which yeah. I think is part of the whole accepting him for who he is, whatever bullshit. And then, like, Lisa goes, and Dean immediately, like, is trying to get shit done. He, like, opens the dad's journal. I do find the journal shit fascinating, because, like, did they ever, like, revamp that thing? Like, is it still what it was when we first got it in season one? The prop? Is there anything new in that thing? Or did it stop in 2005? Are you talking about the prop or are you saying did Sam and Dean add to it? Yeah, did they add to it? Um, I feel like they did. I mean, in the bonus material, like, Dean added the angels page and everyone gaff about that so much, right? But it was already full. Where are they putting the additional pages? Was it already full? No, yeah, you're right. It was like 30 pages in when John left it to them. <laughs> he, he was like, oh, the bullet journaling life is not for me. I don't know why. Why are we doing this? And for real. Right. It's not for me either. Uh, as he's looking out around, Azazel comes about. And it is like a bit of a shock. And I do... The, the choice that they have made this episode... Uh, of like just being like it it feels like you the watcher being destabilized every single mm. reveal which i think is fun like this is azel it feels so like not real you know and it isn't right. real um and the the way you feel while watching it is without any of the gravitas that it should which so you're able to feel more what Dean is feeling of just like the confusion and uh, shock. And mm-hmm. then, you know, um, as Aesel's here, he's telling Dean stuff. And he's he's telling Dean, he's like the manifestation of Dean's insecurity about like not be able to keep this. Uh, but then as Aesel's gonna go kill that guy, somebody stabs Azazel. It's Sam. Yay! And, and Hi, like, Sam. Hi, Sam. Dean, like, passes out. Uh, and he wakes up with Sam there. And he Sam took him in, like, in a fucking abandoned house. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but Dean wakes up and he's like, what? Are you real? And this is what I mean, like, because earlier, like, now this Sam is saying, like, oh, Azazel, not real. Uh, and now Sam's here. And it's like, well, is he real? And I don't, like, I mean, we know it is. But, like, you're able to understand better what Dean is experiencing in that moment. And then immediately mm-hmm. after, he meets Samuel. So, like, you know, it's just up and up and up and up about things. I think the the first way to that we feel that things are weird is that Sam is weird. Sam is so how would you describe Sam? The way he talks and the way he acts in this scene. It's kind of blase. 
Is that what it's called? I thought it was Blaze. Because I was thinking, I should say he acts Blaze, but I should wait for Crystal to say their piece first. Can't believe that. <laughs> he, it feels like he doesn't understand the gravity of the situation. Which is like a common thing later. Um, later on with the car, I thought what they would do is he'd just straight up refuse it. But he doesn't. He says, thank you. I appreciate it. Meaning that he like understands that it's a big deal. He just doesn't feel it. And like, mm-hmm. I think that is like maybe perhaps the vibe of the scene too. Where like, yeah, I suppose conceptually Sam can understand that this is like a really emotional big deal scene for Dean. But he can't like access that particular feeling. Dean does ask if this is heaven when he sees Sam. Oh, yeah. Which is, yeah, sort of nice. And, like, he knows Sam Sam is in hell, so he just thinks that this is, like, some kind of weird memory uh, yeah. loop thing. And that's nice. But Sam's just like, no, I'm real. And he does the silver blade test and the. And this is a fun salt sequence. Water test. Where yeah. he, like, um, you know, I'll do it for you. And then he just glugged some <laughs> holy water. And it's fun. Yeah. I did. I never figured out why they glugged that thing. If you throw it at yourself, you'll be fine, I guess. But I guess then you'll be wet. And they're like, I'd rather yeah. have diarrhea than have to dry my clothes. Mm. For real. This is me when I eat bad vegetables because I don't want to put them in yeah. my trash can because then you don't want to deal with the trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Dean finally realizes that this is Sam for real. And. He hugs him very tightly, and Sam just makes, like, a, okay, (laughs) sort of face about it. Dean's, you know, very stammery, very, like, emotional, and yeah, Sam is blasé. He just says that he has no idea how he's back. Um, he's been trying to call Cass, and he hasn't answered. Yeah. And then... He's talking, he's talking, and he's like, man, it's so crazy. Like, I looked and looked for what brought me back for, like, weeks. And Dean was like, wait. What? what? Wait, how what? long have you been back? And so it's like, oh, you know, like a year. And Dean starts getting real upset about that, and he starts yelling. Yeah. Like, why couldn't you have texted and Sam's explanation is, oh, like, I was doing you a favor because, like, you're out you of finally the life. had what you wanted, like, a family, um, you were building a real life and all of that, so I didn't want to show up and ruin everything. And yeah. Sam- Later on, Bobby shares the exact same sentiment as, mm-hmm. like, his reasoning for not telling Dean. It is... Mm-hmm. You know, that scene happened. I was like, wow, maybe Bobby does love Sam as a son. But I think what's happening in that scene is Sam was like, don't tell Dean because you love him as a son. <laughs> and Bobby's like, yeah. you're right. And you're a coworker. So true. Yeah, which starts the whole thing this episode about how, like, suburbia and having a girlfriend and a kid is like, real life or something I don't know it's some weird company ass bullshit and it is fascinating what Sam says here like I have a family of my own or whatever the fuck yeah well he says that he's been hunting and that he's been working with other people and that and Dean's like what like strangers You're working with strangers? strangers they're more like family and they're here <laughs> And then he just leads Dean to another room, and there are some Campbells in there. There's Gwen, and because she's a woman, she has to be homophobic towards Dean to prove that she's tough enough to be a hunter. Seems yeah, to be and also, like, the vibe. I, I did hate that the way it is done. It, I mean, of the way that the fact that it's done is annoying, but the way that it's done is her telling Dean, like, oh, Dean, you're, like, so pretty. It's like, mm. come on. 
what the fuck is this? What is this? Don't know. They, I, I just it boggles me a little bit that they feel the need to attractiveness, like oh mm-hmm. he settled down, but don't worry, like don't worry of what? <laughs> what shouldn't we not worry? Of? Like, what's going on? <laughs> For real. So yeah, Gwen Campbell's there. There's like some guys named Christian and Mark Campbell who I don't I didn't even remember there were two separate guys here. I thought it was just um, one guy named Christian Mark, if I'm being honest. That's <laughs> <laughs> so real. Yeah, and they're like They're like they're absolutely cousins. nothing characters. And yeah, they are also absolutely nothing characters, which yeah is just feels surprising. Like it just seems like they'd want to know a little bit more about yeah their cousins, but what of? Yeah, but Sam is soulless and doesn't give a fuck. It feels like is the implication. Yeah, and they all grew up hunters, and then Samuel Campbell shows up, and he's like, and. I brought all of these people together. For and real. He, has he like immediately hugs time. Dean. Yeah. He's like my grandson or whatever. Like, yeah. what a weird ass guy. Yeah, I mean, is, it, is that weird? What's weird? Calling your grandson your grandson? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean like, they're trying to do something this episode with regards to, like, what is family? Who is family? And, like, it is just fascinating that, like, you know, like, Dean's argument is family is you don't leave them because you're, they're the ones you grew up with. And the ones that, like, raised you, blah, blah, blah. And then what's the logic behind this guy? He's just some guy. Yeah, I don't know. They they care about their mom a lot, and he's related to her. Um, I mean, they've met before. Like, Dean revealed that he was his grandson to him in, like, I forgot which season. Yeah, and then he Four? died. Yeah, and then he died. But yeah, I guess they have a connection. They know They knew each other before in some way. And they feel they felt the need to to mention that like this guy went to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Like they couldn't funny. just say it brought me back. It's like no, they lifted Sam up from hell and they pulled and me they down pulled from me heaven. Down from heaven. Yeah. So yeah, I like this is the part where the episode just gets really fucking stupid. Like, Dean's like, huh? How are you resurrected? And Samuel is just like, um, well, Sam got pulled up from hell and I got pulled down from heaven by, like, some force. Um, so yeah, yay. And, okay. Because, okay, what got Sam out? Was Cass, did Cass just go up and yeet Dean's grandfather down for no reason? Like, do we find out? What I don't here? know, and I severely do not like or care about this guy, so I yeah. suspect that I will remember. Hmm. I don't suspect that I will remember. Mm-hmm. I suspect that I won't remember. Wow. Conjugation. Wow. Is that what conjugation yeah. is, or is conjugation no, a different I, thing? I don't know what conjugation is. It's something to do with verbs. They were like, we need a Sam who's like related to like Dean and they were like we we got two of them what do you want us to do just get both of them I don't know throw them on earth no one else has been resurrected ever except for them no yeah what is that about or I, I don't actually know and like there are inklings now of the like special monster situation that they have going. And I'm pretty sure Samuel is gonna turn up to be evil. Like Okay. Or something. Um, so I don't know. Maybe he was like brought up by some demon. Or I mean maybe he's not Samuel. He could just be a special monster. Could just be some guy. But yeah, so there's some backstory. Um 
Yeah, Samuel wanted to get Dean to join them on, on their hunt, but Sam said no. And they're here now because some djinn attacked Sam. Um, Dean calls Jin exotic. Great. Good job. <laughs> um, yeah, Sam says that these are special ones because they kill you by touching you and they poison you and then you have nightmares and then you die. I feel like you would just make up a new monster. <laughs> No, I mean, yes, make up a new monster. And I, I there is, like, a sense of, um... The, well, we, we've talked about it before, but, like, jinns are, like, part of Arab culture. Like, it's... Yeah. I, and the way that they portray it is, like, quite disrespectful and all that crap. Yeah, and just inaccurate um, so, also. It, yeah, inaccurate, disrespectful. Um... And, like, you know, the way they interface with it, too. Like, Dean saying, calling it, like, exotic, or, you know. Like, mm-hmm. uh, but the thing is, like, uh, what they're trying to do this season is, like, oh, yeah, like, there's the monsters are, like, getting fiercer. They're, mm-hmm. like, getting meaner and worse or whatever. Um, right. I don't know. Have some cultural sensitivity is what I think. Yeah, wait, so, like, what are new vampires like? Um, I don't know. I think they're fiercer. (laughs) How? (laughs) They're getting too fierce with the vampirism, is what I think. It just seems like it becoming, they kill you through touch. Like, that just seems too different from what it was before. Like, it doesn't seem like an actual adaptation. What what will happen later on is that the, the monsters actually... Are like instead of being more powerful, they're more of like mutating, and like, like for example, you'll have a werepire, you know? Hell yeah! Or like I don't know, like oh, this one is like a ghoul, but also a vampire, but also you know, like mm. they're like forming super monsters. I think is what they call it at the end. So it could be that like this one. The primary thing that they saw is a gen, but like, um, they're actually like combo, you know, like combo mm-hmm. monsters. Or so, but then you know, begs the question: What is a monster, and what counts? Like, if a vampire took up witchcraft, is that like a super monster or what? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he just has a hobby. Um, Samuel has a cure for the gin poison. So, that's helping them out. And they think that the gin are after Dean because of how he killed one a while ago. And then Dean starts getting worried about Lisa and Ben. And demands to be taken home right now. They go over. Oh, there's some guy named Johnny Campbell. Who they sent to watch over Lisa and Ben, and he's dead. Like the gin got him. Do they not Is that care? True? Yeah, I think they gaff. Like, what? Like, why didn't anybody? Okay, so yeah, he was sent over to watch Lisa and Dean, but he got killed. Yeah, n- yeah, nobody. I don't like any. I didn't see any like reaction from anybody about this. No, yeah. I mean, are they also less? Mm, I don't know. Are they? Or do they just not care about their cousins that much? Yeah. They're allegedly family, but you know. They're co-workers. Yeah, exactly. Is Samuel soulless? Or what's the deal with him? Yeah, I suppose. I suppose we don't know. Or I don't know, I should. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Dean's freaking out, running around, but then Lisa and Ben come back in, and he's very relieved to see them, and he hugs them really tight, and Lisa, like, goes, ow! And he tells them that they gotta pack and go to a friend's house. So they start getting ready to do that, and then Sam is standing shows up behind, and 
Lisa sees him and is so shocked. Well, but Ben sees him first. Who he is. Yeah, uh, and he's like, and Ben's like, uh, oh, who the fuck is this giant man in our I house? I mean, he has met Sam before in season. Is that three. true? I don't think that's true. Wait, was Sam always somewhere else during that episode? Oh yeah, he did like save the kids. I mean, it's possible that he never, because like Dean was with at. Ben. Yeah, well, Dean was at the birthday party by himself. He taught Ben to be mean to the bullies by himself, and Dean was the one who let the kids out of the cages. Yeah. I don't think he knew. Where, what did Sam do that entire episode? I think he just, you know, he hanged out with the MILFs or whatever. So true. They drive over to Bobby's, and Bobby is disappointed to see Dean because it means that his apple tart life is not going well. No, this one, this one is apple pie. Okay, his apple If you live in a college dorm, well. that's that the definition of an apple tart life is you have a beautiful girlfriend but you live in a college dorm. I see. And an apple pie life is a beautiful girlfriend and you live in a house. What happens if you live in a house but you don't have a girlfriend? I think maybe that's a I don't know. What what's a what's a a food that you eat by yourself? Any food? <laughs> <laughs> this that's an any food life, yeah. No specific food. I see. Cuz as you know, an apple pie you can only eat with a family. With a, yeah, a beautiful I guess girlfriend. I like, like an in apple a turnover house. is more of a one person thing. Yeah, this is true. Don't you make those? Yeah. I tried to make apple turnovers one time, but it was summer, and I'm also bad at freezing butter and not heating it up, and I don't have a marble countertop or whatever to keep it cold either, so the yeah. dough was just, like, not flaky, and I don't think it counted as an apple Aww. turnover. So sorry. I think You know what? You. An apple crumble. That's a. An apple that's a, can be big, though. It can also be small. <laughs> an apple pie can be small, too. Well, a, a small apple crumble <laughs> is what it is when you have a house, but you don't have a girlfriend. Okay, but if you have a girlfriend, it's still an apple pie and not a large apple crumble. <laughs> I think if you have a girlfriend, but you have a terrible house, it's an apple crumble <laughs> life. <laughs> if, so you have a, if you have a nice house and you don't have a girlfriend, what is it? No, this this is the turnover. That's the turnover. The, the okay. nice house is turnover. Terrible house, crumble. With or without a girlfriend. An apple crumble life is if you have a terrible house... With or without a girlfriend. A small apple oh, crumble. Oh, a terrible is no house girlfriend. overrides it. Big apple okay, crumble. Okay. Girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I feel a lot smarter now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bobby doesn't like that Dean is here because it means that his apple pie life is Joe over. And so he just sends Lisa and Ben upstairs. And Sam shows up behind Dean again, and Dean's sort of waiting for Bobby's reaction, and Bobby's just like, hey, man. And Dean starts getting very upset again about how Bobby yeah. knew that Sam was alive for the entire year. And yeah, Also, Bobby's it's so reasoning- funny to me that, like, Ben... Mm-hmm. Does Ben say a single word this episode? He says, ah, uh, when he sees Sam. Literally. Like, we, like, Lisa's barely a character, but Ben is, like, not a character at all, it feels like. Oh, not at all. He's just there to be like, oh my god, and there's a child at stake, too. And, like, the thing is, like, you know, we've discussed in the past, like, maybe Dean doesn't even love Sam as a person. He just loves the concept of, like, a little brother. And this yeah. kind of, like, supports it. Like, mm-hmm. he, like a replacement for Sam is this kid, like... And that's, like, kind of implied in the text because, like, yeah. of the way the montage was set up. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Ben was Sam's replacement in that thing. Um, mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Like, now it's like, we don't even know what Ben's personality. He has, like, no complexity as a character. So, yeah, maybe I Dean... His personality in season three was being a misogynist. <laughs> yeah. But the way they do that, even, is like, see, he's just like Dean for real. Because <laughs> yeah. Dean is his father. And misogyny, inherited trait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We already had our whole discussion in 301 about how is Ben like this if Lisa seems like a nice person. But yeah. Bobby's reasoning for not telling Dean is the same as Sam's is that he was so happy that Dean got out of the hunting life. And Bobby calls, like, what he has a woman and a kid. (laughs) No, yeah, that's crazy. (laughs) Which is kind of crazy to me. Like, sure, I guess. I don't know, but yeah, it really is just about, like, random people who fill a prescribed role in your life and not about somebody yeah i mean there like we had this discussion before when i was like you know what i'll be more forgiving with sam and dean for conceptualizing like life this way you know because like it's the way life is peddled to people but now like there those roles are actually filled up like there is an actual wife and there is an actual child you know and it just Mm -hmm. feels like, if you're conceptualizing it from before, you're like, oh, what I want in life is a child and a wife. I'm like, I'm I'm going to be able to comprehend that more, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, because you are visualizing something. But this one is like, there's no visualization anymore. Like, those people are real. Right. So, I don't know. Don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems like they really could be swapped out for anybody. Yeah. Um, and Cass will fucking try. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Dean goes, that woman and that kid, I went to them because you asked me to. Mm. <laughs> Incredibly funny sentence to me. I think less funny to gay Dean truthers. I can understand why. <laughs> but yeah, and then Dean says something that I do think makes sense I'm glad that they are grappling with in some way where he just goes like like okay sure maybe it was good for me in some way but like for them like I was like out of my head with grief I drank a lot and I had a lot of nightmares etc he says that he doesn't know why they took him in and all that he also says that he tried really hard to get Sam out even though he promised to not. Yeah. Oh, we have the do I look out to you line also because no, Bobby incredibly tells Dean funny. That he was out of the life. And Dean goes, do I look out to you, Slay? Slay. Happy gay Dean truthing. Later on, the way the narrative responds to like this, this thing that Dean poses of like, yeah, for me, but what about them? Is that Lisa loved it. <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> I mean, I'm not super upset about that. Like, I no, no, no. I think it's fine. It, but, but I, I just yeah. find it funny that the show <laughs> felt the need to immediately fun. respond to it. Like, no, no, it was, it was the great. best year she of her it. life. Now we have a Dean and Lisa conversation. You know what? Not mind-boggling. I completely understand it. What they're doing is, um, they're by the staircase and Lisa is, like, talking to Dean about how Ben is doing. Uh, and then Dean says, like, okay, me and Sam, we're gonna head out for a bit. You guys stay here for a bit. And Lisa asks, for how long? And Dean goes, I am so sorry, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> incredibly funny response lisa asks like for what dean says like yeah those those things they were always gonna come for me and i should have known and like i'm putting you and ben in danger he says um it's stupid and reckless you can't outrun your past lisa says like oh you're saying goodbye 
And Dean says, he's saying, sorry. And, I mean, he is saying goodbye in this scene, is what it feels like. Um, but later, he changes his mind. Uh, and Lisa says that, actually, Dean, this was the best year of my life. Um, and that they, they keep on bringing up this thing where, like, you're so good to Ben. Which I do find fascinating. Like... Even with even Lisa is like, you love me. It's never you know what I mean. Uh, mm. Like the way she words this, it could they could have been lavender married. Like, yeah, it was a greeting card perfect. But we were in it together, and you know, like you were so good with the kid. Blah blah blah. I don't know. Maybe they were lavender married. Yeah, I mean, she specifically says, like, that what she wanted more than anything was a guy that Ben could look up to. Like. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, she's been seeking relationships for, like, her son to have a male role model, not really for any, like, personal romantic fulfillment. Yeah. And, I don't know, maybe this is a more accurate, um portrayal of relationships as you get older i'm not sure i do it is like wild to me that even with lisa in lisa's perception it doesn't feel like she it like love for her is the main reason for this thing Mm -hmm. it's sort of like a social responsibility to a child yeah Uh, like he should have two parents etc etc or I don't always have time to drive him to school. It's nice to have another person in the car here. Yeah. And it's just, it's one of those things that, I don't know, they're trying to say something about domestic life. I don't really understand what they're trying to say yet. Like, they're portraying this as a good thing, right? Like, this relationship? Or are they? Yeah. I think so. Okay. And but I don't think they're portraying it as a good relationship in I don't know. I don't know. Supernatural is weird about domesticity. Which is on the you know, it's a show about being on the road, Jack Kerouac. So I get it. But it's just about like the like the lack of romantic affection between them. Like the like the reason this relationship is good is that he has two people that he's responsible for, but, like, in a chill way. <laughs> yeah, maybe Dean really is a romantic. Yeah. Lisa also. And, I mean, good for them, honestly. I mean, yeah, Ben's the result of she said she was just really into sleeping with biker dudes for a while. And, like, she hasn't yeah. sought romance since. No, like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. yeah. This is a gay Dean. Uh, I release a situation, and I support that. Hell yeah, good for them. This is a beautiful relationship, and he should keep it then. No, 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 like, that's what I'm asking. Because, like, to me, this mm-hmm. dynamic of, like, there's no romance in the relationship, it's a res- it's it's your fulfilling a role, and it satisfies you. Because it feels like it satisfies Dean. Like, he's happy to yeah. do this for Lisa and for Ben. Like, that is a kind of relationship I can comprehend and understand. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's why I'm asking, like, how is Supernatural portraying this specific aspect of the relationship? Like, I I, I don't know, but I do like it. And, uh, like, if this was removed from the misogyny of Supernatural, I would probably Mm. be like, oh, yeah, look at this relationship that I really, um, like, they could make it work, like, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Dean Dean actually is like, no, it wasn't that good. Like, I was such a mess. But Lisa says, well, if the guy who essentially saved the world shows up at your doorstep, you'd expect him to have some problems. Yeah, and she says the thing about Ben. She says, I can't believe you think of it as all bad. And it's wonderful for me. And I think this is the thing that convinces Dean later to make the decision he makes. Yeah. Like, it's not a bad... Like, he when he makes that decision, it's not about him, which I find fascinating. Like it's not him. Like I love Lisa and I want to stay with her, and I love Ben and I want to stay with her. It's 
I already inflicted with them the fear of not being safe. And so I should be here and keep them safe because it's my responsibility. All right. Yeah. I have a question. Uh-huh. Do you, do you dislike Dean this episode? He's fine. He is. Really? Do you dislike there was, Dean this episode? Um, no. I find him interesting, but I would say I'm not particularly fond of him. Those are different things to me. Mm. I think um he's just so sad. <laughs> and as we have established, I don't really like sad characters. Yeah, I think he hasn't really been condescending to anybody that th- much this episode. I think that's when I dislike him. <laughs> I think um what it is is that he's he's in the disadvantage of not knowing things this episode. Yeah. So he can't like outsnark or whatever, like he usually he does. Tries. Like he, he's he's not in the position of power to be in the position of power. Right. Yeah. He's talking to the Campbells, and he suggests being bait at Lisa's house, sort in of a, as a snarky a, thing because yeah. Christian Campbell is like. Oh, well, leave it to the professional hunter. And Dean's like, well, actually, because I'm super experienced, I know about this thing called bait, and I want to be that. Yeah, so, he said, I'm going to clear that bait. Exactly. So they go into Lisa's house, and they call him gay for like five minutes. No, what is um, this about? <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I think it's about how having a beautiful girlfriend and living in a house having in the a beautiful makes you gay. Yeah, what it in the apple crumble, apple tart, apple turnover, apple pie life? Where at what point is it gay? Like, what makes it gay? Because they make fun of his hobbies too. Like, oh, he plays golf. Gay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't a, think the golf thing was gay. I feel like that was just Sam being like, that's stupid. I feel like the, the first I think it's more of like a class gay. thing. He's like, wow, you're, mm, you're, um, yeah. you're rich now, huh? You play golf? Yeah, I think that's what the golf is. Yeah. But yeah, I think, yeah. But Gwen maybe being gay like, is rich or being rich is gay or whatever. I don't know. They did maybe say being gay that is in rich. Terrible Life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Gwen picks up like a like a women's magazine or something, and she's like, mm-hmm. "Oh, is this yours or your wife's?" The cover is Scarlett Johansson, I think, and it says "150 best beauty buys" and also "what to wear now: pretty dresses, weekend classics, sexy date looks." Why? why yeah, the magazine is in style for what? having a wife or a girlfriend who. Cares well, about things. I, I think it's just I don't know. I think the it's proximity of it. She called him your gay life. earlier, and now she's like, and I bet you want to wear pretty dresses and have hot date night looks. I don't know what mm. it is. Or I don't. I think it's just like this is like a like a shallow thing to care about in general because I'm a hunter woman and I don't. So. Either way, whoever owns it, I think they're stupid. Yeah, I think that's the vibe with the golf also. Like, oh, you actually care about this? How? What a loser. It's about, I think, the like sincerity of enjoying uh, domestic life is what they're making fun of him for. Because if Dean stood there and was like, oh, look at this, so stupid, he'll be fine. Mm. So it's not the proximity. It's not the existence of the thing in a place he lives in. It's him not being bothered by it and enjoying it mm. and fully yeah. participating in this kind of life. You know, Supernatural has a thing, like, you can do it, but you need to be ashamed by it. Like, you know, you can yeah. kill someone brutally in a hunt, um, but the concern is if you're not worried, if you're not sad about it, then that's a bad thing, but the killing itself is fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and this is like the same vibe. Yeah, like, Mark Campbell's just looking at a photo of Dean and Lisa and, like, making a face about it. No, literally, they're like, 
I can't believe you have like, pictures of yourself and your family in this house that you live in with your family. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, um, yeah, as I've said, yeah. it's the unabashed en- enjoyment and participation. If he mm-hmm. was, like, apprehensive. If it was like, oh, there's pictures of everyone but me because I don't like taking pictures because I think it's cringe. Like, it's yeah, gonna be fine. my stupid girlfriend makes me do it. It is, it is, like, this does, like, get to me because I remember, like, one time I was reading this, this like, research and they did it in Indonesia, but, like, it's based on research that has already been done in other countries. Uh, where it's, like, they would... Um, like they they, I forgot the actual procedure, but they measured the like what is it, what is it, what is the thing that makes men like, um, not like it when women are in the workplace or like not like it if their wife goes to work, and the findings mm-hmm. are basically like, they're fine by it like as a person, but once you put them in a social situation with other people, that's when it becomes like a bad thing, mm-hmm. like it's not. The, the personal perception it's like oh but what will people think if my wife is smarter than me and like this this is like the feeling of the scene right like Dean is fine with it Dean enjoys his life but like the question of like oh but what will people think if they know that I love to I don't know teach a kid how to change a tire what would they think <laughs> like I, uh... it's 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 humiliating. Yeah. Anyway, Samuel and Dean have this entire conversation where um, Dean is like, oh yeah, go ahead, like, tell me that I'm such a suburban, I'm a soccer mom. Uh, and Samuel kind of dismisses it. And then he goes, no, I get it. Like, you wanted a normal life. You got a normal life. Your mom wanted a normal life. And he he says, you remind me of her, actually. The same attitude. Um, it's it's actually, like, kind of smart of him to be like, oh, yeah, Dean, like, you remind me of your mom. And also, you should leave your entire family and join <laughs> us. Like, <laughs> this guy knows how to talk to people. Yeah. By knows to how to talk to people, I mean, like, manipulate other people's inclinations. Uh, this is where he mentions the like whole thing with the gin acting out and other um, other creatures that weren't supposed to do things a certain way doing it that way like werewolves are like coming out even though it's not full moon and etc etc and there's some creatures they've never seen before and yeah so we don't know what's happening but we need all hands on deck and so he's asking Dean to leave his life and join the Capitals. Season 5 also opens with like uh, Sam being in a similar situation where he leaves hunting and all that. Yeah. And then people are like, well, everyone's going to die and we need all hands on deck, etc., etc. Does like yeah. the show's attitude about this differ widely between the Sam and the Dean situations? Um, I don't know, actually. I feel like there is a bit more conflict that they give for Dean. Just because mm-hmm. um, of the situation. Like, Dean has actively, like, a life he's gonna leave behind. Mm-hmm. Versus Sam, where they painted it as he's leaving behind his life. Mm. So, I don't know. You know what yeah. I mean, right? Like, maybe if they yeah, did this yeah. a year earlier for Dean. Like, they did it, like, a month into his life. Maybe it would be a bit more similar. But mm-hmm. but now it's, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's, it, they're just incomparable because of the difference of what they're gonna leave behind if they go back to hunting. Well, I mean, Sam was potentially leaving sobriety behind if he went back to hunting. But... Yeah. Yeah, I guess there was... It's not really a direct one-on-one the way that Dean going back to hunting somehow means that he has to leave Lisa and Ben forever and not even text. Yeah. 
Mark is in a truck doing lookout and his thing is just that he doesn't talk and is maybe mean and he sees a bunch of gin or th three of them off in the trees so Dean tells all the Campbells that they need to leave because they won't come to the house ah, and attack. Huh? The Campbell that died was the one in the car earlier. Yeah. They, they, there's like a dead guy in a car. Okay, got it. Yeah. I couldn't figure out where the fuck a dead person was earlier. But now yeah, I remember. Yeah, was the and person understand. in the car who had to look out for Lisa and Ben. I thought that was just yeah. some dude. I was, I honestly was like, wow, there's just some guy here who's dead. R.I.P. R.I.P. for real. Yeah, he tells the Campbells to clear out so that the djinn will actually oh, come and attack. Oh, Crystal. They they're outnumbered, yeah. We forgot to talk about the damn splash screen. I don't even remember what it was. It's glass. It's like, it's blue. It's like glass. There's no screaming. Because I think last season was the screaming, right? Or something. Yeah. Um, this one has like a pitch. Like, like you know, like the sound that cats would make on the radio. Aww. Sounds like that. And um, yeah, and it's uh, blue. So like icy cold um aesthetic and then there's like glass cracking um mm. or maybe it's ice cracking but i'm pretty sure it's like glass i was smashing to pieces and i i was thinking about this and my immediate thought was of course like lucifer's line about like how hell runs cold mm. or like lucifer runs cold and i i think about like what we see of sam in hell later in the season and he's fire being burned. And it's like, oh, yeah. I'm sad that they didn't continue that motif. But I think that that is the feeling that evokes in me this season. I don't really know how el what else it should. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. This, this fucking season intros are very hit or miss, as always. Mm. So the Campbells leave... While Sam and Dean are alone, Dean does the, hey, do you want to talk about hell and your feelings or something? And Sam just goes, no. <laughs> like, I'm back. No. I'm fine. Why would I want to think about that? And Dean tries to talk about it some more, but then he sees that his neighbor and best friend that he just let go, Sid, is being killed by Jin, and so is his whole wife. He starts running over there to save them, even though Sam says, like, don't bother, like, they're literally already dead, like, why are you doing this? But Dean runs in anyway, and he's very sad about how Sid died, except he's not actually that sad, he just says Sid in, like, honestly a voice that sounds bored, so I understand why you missed that he was the guy who died, Gray. Um, the djinn attack Dean, and they're like, we're gonna kill you because you killed our dad in season two. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is their precursor to January. Like they were like, it really let's is. try it out. You know, like let's every season now we could end. It. So let's try it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, and then he gets poisoned, and he starts hallucinating that Lisa and Ben are coming back, and they're gonna get killed, and Azazel's yeah. there. And then Vaya Lisa's lifting in a up the white fucking nightgown. Wall. Yeah, and he lifts her up into the air, and then he cuts her stomach like Mary, and then she's on fire. And also, the whole time Ben's there, and Azazel's like, You should drink my demon blood. Yeah. yeah. It is crazy that um, that's like the direct line. Like, it literally is yeah. like Dean thinks of Ben like Sam. Yeah. It's so explicit. Well, at least it's supportive of my argument of like Dean thinks of can't help but think of Sam as his kid. 
Oh, one of the gin is the waitress who gave Dean her number. The number? Oh, you know what? I couldn't... I'm so sorry, but I couldn't recognize her. I thought she was the other Campbell. I was like, oh my god, one of the Campbells is a fake Campbell and is actually a gin. <laughs> no. Yeah, I didn't recognize her. I thought she was just some new woman, but no. Okay. Cool. But it is it is kind of wild the way they are like, oh, this person is a gin, and the way we're gonna show that they're evil is to zoom in on the tattoos they have. Yeah. <laughs> kind of wild. Mm. Kind of wild. Don't know about that, yeah. man. <laughs> Yeah, Don't know about that feels like, glowing in season two, which that makes more sense to me. These people that's look like, like just some guys. That humans don't do the tattoos. That's weird. Yeah, they capture Brigida like the waitress, and mm-hmm. like get her in the van alive. And they don't really say what they do with her yeah. after that. Because Samuel yeah. is like, take her away. Mm. Yeah, and then they, she gets taken away. You know, when you say they don't really say, are you, like, saying that or, like, do you actually know or what's going on? Oh, well, I was assuming they'd, like, torture her or something. I don't really know what the point of keeping her alive is. Well, I suppose you'll know. Like, maybe to make his gin poison cure, like, he needs something. I don't Mm. know what it is. Sam and Dean, like, are now in the house. And it's it's just the two of them. Like, all the other campos have, like, gone about. And Sam's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to meet them. Are you going to come with me? Um, and Dean says, no. Um, I'm going to go back for Lisa and Ben. Um, he says he changed his mind. Uh, and then Sam goes, look, I practically shoved you at them. And Dean mm-hmm. literally says what you said earlier. Like, that's a really hilarious way to put that. Um, and Sam says, I wanted that for you, but uh, now I'm not sure. And Sam is like, Sam says something that, like, if it, if you didn't notice before that Sam is acting weird, you definitely mm-hmm. notice now. He just says straight up, quite unfeelingly, goes, mm-hmm. you gotta consider the fact that you'd be putting them in danger if you go back. Which, like, mm-hmm. we've seen Sam waver on this, right? Like, we've seen Sam make um, the other argument to himself. And then we've seen Sam make this argument to Adam, actually. And but the thing Jimmy. is, when he made... Yeah, and to Jimmy. But when he made those those arguments to those people, it was either, like, angry, frustrated, mm-hmm. or, like, very sad... And it's very obvious that it's coming from a personal conflict for him as well. Like, Mm -hmm. he considers this to be the case for him. And that's what, you know, like, it's coming from a place of um, sadness about his own situation. It's just this one is so sad to a matter of fact, truly. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, you're going to put them in danger. And, like, so unfeelingly that you're like, oh, something's weird. Mm -hmm. I... Honestly, why are people saying that? Okay. Sam, like, soulless Sam. Honestly, my main thought was, like, they uncatholicized my boy. (laughs) They removed his fucking Catholic guilt, man. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's great. Yeah, I also like him. Yeah. And Dean said us, like, actually... You're wrong. I'll be putting them in more danger if I leave. Because then no one's going to be able to protect them. And Sam says, well, okay, that's fine. But I still wish that you were coming. Because you have this willingness to help people. That's what drives you. You don't think twice about it. Like you went into that house without even thinking about it. And Dean is like, yeah, I mean, it was a wrong move. But also, like, you would have done the same thing. And Sam says, no, I wouldn't have. I don't care about people. I wouldn't even think to try. Mm -hmm. 
And Sam says, yeah, no, I had the gaff actually, so. Um, and as he's heading out, Dean does his the biggest yes gesture that he is capable of in any situation. He tries to Sam to hand Sam the keys to the car. And Sam literally just goes, okay, um, but no. <laughs> He says thanks, but I already got my car set up how I like it. And so yeah, fun. So he goes. Yeah. It's a very good final note of like something is wrong with Sam for real. Because like Swan yeah. Song like literally was about the impal and how, how much he loves it was that. to Sam yeah. and how it's his home, etc. etc. So I think it's a very good ending note that's like just the right amount of subtle and not subtle as like a something is wrong with him. So I feel like a lot of the earlier stuff you can be like, oh, that's the hell trauma. That's the hell trauma. But I feel like this one is like, oh, something really is up. Yeah. I I find it fascinating. And I don't know, like, I like the, the way people interface with um, season six, Sam, I think is also interesting. Because it's so much, it's so interesting what they're doing with season six, Sam. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward. Honestly, I know I berated this episode, but I am mm. looking forward to season six. And I, I don't know, like, it's, it's, I think the first season we will watch, that's not true. I didn't know much about, like, season two. No, I think I know more about season two than I did going into the podcast than I did season six. Mm. Um, but yeah, this is like, I feel like the first season where I think I'm in for a ride that I'm not that familiar with, you know? Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I oh, think yeah. we'll see, we'll see Cass in episode three. So I don't think he's around next episode yet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I'm not actually sure what the next episode is about. But okay, uh, that's what I think about this episode. How about you? What else? <laughs> it was fine. It was an amount of time. Yeah. I, um, I, I look forward to seeing Sam again. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a different Sam. So I understand if it's not like... The same form. No, I like I like new Sam. I think he's fun. Yeah, he is fun. Well, um, best line, worst line. Oh, there were lines in this. Yeah, it feels like just like it feels like a putty. You know, like I feel like that the, the the reason why I'm like weird about this episode is like it does feel like something is off about it, and I can't. I can't pinpoint to anything other than they've got a new showrunner. I mean, I think a large percentage of it is hallucinations or feels like hallucinations, so that could be part of it. What do you mean by that? Oh, I don't I feel like I was never really settled in the episode because it was often like, is this happening? I don't know. Ah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's it's the nature of the episode as well. Mm. Okay. Best line, worst line. Uh, I think my uh, worst lines are every single thing Azazel says. Hmm. I just think it's so corny. Like, oh no, Dean. Your life, it's gonna fall apart. Like, okay, whatever. Everybody dies. <laughs> Who give a shit? Okay. <laughs> For real. I don't actually know if there's any good lines this entire episode. You I know mean, what? I, I do like got my car set up how I like it. It's fun. This is true. You know, I do like the way Dean um, talks to Lisa, uh, Lisa about like Just sweeping over the, the place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He does say like um, this is the line. He goes, I'll tell you what, just because, you know, I have an OCD thing about this. Why don't you and Ben go to the movies, heat the cheesecake factory, you know, hang out with the teaming masses, and I'll do one last week just to be 100% sure. Like, 
I like that he words it not as like, oh, I'm worried, so you guys should go. It's more of、mm. like, I want to、um, self soothe by、mm. uh, placating my feelings. And it'll,、uh, I, all way for me to do that is for you guys to be out of the house for a bit.、Mm-hmm. I wonder how much Ben knows. I mean, he was in that, that cage. When the chain、yeah, but, shit happened. Yeah, but, like, do they explain to him that, like, o d i n almost died saving the world or whatever? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like he'd have questions, but I don't know if they'd answer them. Yeah. The thing is, like, I think there was a time in my life where I was like, how come Lisa is, like, not curious about it? Because, like, I don't think she knows about what went down and she doesn't ask.、Um, I think now, as I'm older, I'm like, yeah, who g i v e a shit? Like, not who g i v e a shit, but like, you really wouldn't ask, I don't think. Hmm. I would. would you? You would? Yeah. Yeah. You said you'd save the world from apocalypse. Like, how? What? What was gonna happen? What are you talking about? Ah,、uh, okay. I don't think I would. I、yeah. think I'll be like, okay, let's go. Are you gonna come with me? I'm gonna fetch the kid or something. Hmm. Yeah, but as you know, the other week I told you that I'm trying to work on being better at talking with people about things. And you asked,、yeah. so, like, are you gonna talk to more people about more things? And I'm like, no, I'm never gonna talk about anything ever. I'm trying to not talk. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so maybe that's, maybe that's the reason behind this. Maybe so.、Uh, thinking. It's red sheets, red dough sheets. There's definitely homophobia. There's something. And I would classify it as homophobia. Okay, misogyny. How are we gonna、uh, do this? It's there. How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna do this? I I'm inclined to say yes. Just yeah, because. But not hot. Not for Lee. Like, I wouldn't say not for Lisa specifically. I would say the fact that they give most of the homophobia lines to the one woman. And I、mm. do think it is because she's a woman. Because they're trying、yeah. to do like a. Oh, yeah, but she's not girly. And、yeah. Dean, you're girlier than her. Or whatever the fuck. <laughs> like, I don't like、yeah. that. Um, mm-hmm. And I also don't really like the thing that they do with like the waiter of like, oh, she's giving her number to Dean, but Dean's like, oh, what a, what a. People, women always like men who are unavailable. He says that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't like that as well.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, is that a two? I'd say,、uh, yeah, I'd say two.、Mm-hmm. Racism, I think, for the gen. There should、mm-hmm. be points. How many? One or two. I'll give it a two just to be even across the board because how much homophobia do you think there is? A lot. I think it's fundamental to the episode. Hmm. How many? I'd say a three. How many points? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see the vision.、All、okay,、right. now you need to do the IMD before the. Yes.、Six. Um, you said evens and odds for who guesses first. Yeah. So, who, who's guessing first this time? Do you think of yourself more as an even person or an odd person? <laughs> um, I think odd. You're odd? Okay. Why? What's your、um, reasoning? I don't know. The odds have the prime numbers in them, those are fun. What? But two is also a prime number. There's only one even number that's a prime number. There's a lot of、ah. odds that are prime numbers. Okay, okay. Man, this is a tough one. I really have no clue. Like, I feel like people, some people, like, a lot of season openers just get rated high because people are like, I'm so excited Supernatural is back. But I feel like Sam acting weird might throw some people off. I think new showrunner might throw some people off. Yeah, but there's also a chance that people went back to rate it. 
like mm-hmm. people like after the know. soulless sam reveal yeah. and they're like actually this was genius oh interesting 501 only got an 8.7 is this better what or is 501? worse than 501 sympathy sympathy for the devil, for the devil. Last Rise, of course, is so highly rated. Mm-hmm. Magnificent 7 is 8.5. That episode is bad. It's, yeah. Okay, 9. so it seems like season, season openings don't actually get us like a specific boost that I think that they do. Um, I mean, we were right that season 2 and season 4 were uniquely good. True. According to the IMDb's. And they yes. were. Okay, I'm gonna go with an 8. Point six. That's good. You know, I still can't believe that in my time of dying is that good. It is actually stupendously good. Mm. And yeah, great, wonderful. Well, um, wonderful. my grade for this one is an eight point. You know, I'm gonna go lower. It's an eight point four. It's not that good. All right. Okay. Let's see. <gasps> it's a seven point uh-huh. six. Oh, People that's really like bad. It. People, will I think for the reasons we said about Sam. Huh. And, uh, people right. are saying season five was so hype. So, like, of course, season six is gonna be bad. They're huh. saying like, um, there's no real explanation for anything, which is true. They're trying to hide all that shit. It is. I think it is pretty brave for Sarah Gamble to go. Season five was a banger season new showrunner everything we're going to start this season we're not gonna explain anything it's gonna play the fuck out i i commend that Mm. like it's it's a miserable watching experience i guess if you're watching it the first time and you don't know what's happening but i commend the uh, bravery this one is complaining that dean said possum scary rabies i mean he was lying (laughs) of course but like he was making shit up (laughs) Yeah, but this person's feelings were hurt because possums don't play like that. Um, This one is like, oh, it's so flat and undramatic. Like Sam and Dean's reunion in comparison to like um, Dean and Bobby and Dean and Sam in season four. I mean, they just didn't see the vision yet. Ben's character is too flat. That's that one. Yeah, no defense for that. It's true. And I enjoyed seeing Dean as a one-woman man not responding to girls trying to seduce him like he was in the past. Is he truly in love with Lisa? I have no problem with that. End of review. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This one says, Supernatural was, for me anyway, a sign that good TV could still be found. And then they, like, you know, say good things about um, the, like season five, they insult Route six six six, and they said like, "Oh, season five finale was great." Uh, this was really bad. It was a disappointment. It was bland. The role reversal sickened me. Bringing back Grams into the picture is a huge mistake. That one is true. Agreed. <laughs> I've decided to give it until episode four or five to become what it once was, hoping that it will get better. I'm sorry to say, I'm not expecting it. So in the event that it truly doesn't regain its former glory, farewell, Supernatural. It's a shame to see you become one of the walking dead that your cast taunts. <laughs> kind of a banger. And uh, it's still a This is the last see ever IMDb any- review. Oh well, my they only God. have two. They only have two. So it's possible that they went back to Supernatural. We don't really know. Yeah. So sorry. Well, at least they watched Biohazard 2 and it's the best of the now five game series. Scary, <laughs> suspenseful, and plot twist that will leave you in awe. <laughs> I'll give it three out of ten. One for Bobby, one for Sam, and one for Dean. <laughs> so true. <laughs> That's hilarious. Screenplay sucks. Get new writers. <laughs> Get new writers. <laughs> Even more get new writers. Well, there's going to be a writing duo called Buck Lemming that are going to come up pretty oh, soon. Oh, God. Dean, Dean, Dean. 
the season gets worse from this episode onwards. This is from December 6, 2021. Season 6 is the worst season of the entire series. Oh, Crystal. <laughs> it starts with an awful opener that doesn't hold a candle to the excellent season finale of season 5. Plus, the jerk Samuel returns, which doesn't make any sense in the play. Happy Family just feels wrong. That's season 6 true. is just an excuse to let this year's drag on, and they should have ended it at season 5. I think maybe a lot of the people are like, season 5 should have been the ending of Supernatural really are driven by, like, season 6 and 7. Because, like, when I say mm. season, like, Supernatural should have continued, it's because I'm thinking of season 10, season 9, um, season 14, you know? I love season 14, honestly. Uh, mm. You know, like, I'm thinking of the later seasons, but this one, this, this two Sarah Gam- I'm so sorry, but these two Sarah Gamble ones really do suck. Mm. And I mean, I'm still excited. <laughs> like, I still want to get into season six. Season seven, I don't think I can do it. Like, I don't think I can be excited. So sorry. Mm. We're going to lose our minds that season. What if we do that, like, thing where, like, two season per, two episode per episode in season seven? You think that could work? I mean, maybe. Or maybe not. Well, that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 6, Episode 2, Two and a Half Men. Uh, leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B-pod. Thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod, which is where our outtakes live. And check out our merch on Redbubble. Wait, on... And check out our merch on babpod.redbubble.com. Uh, you can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustationmoodiespod.gmail.com. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.